I think this group has been sold on Caleb Williams, the quarterback, for quite some time. Absolutely. I think what they wanted to do was become comfortable with the person. The biggest takeaway is that uh, you can see the arm talent on the film, and you can see it there in, in, you know, in person. And that was the biggest takeaway. Jalen Johnson inked the long-term deal that he was looking for. He got paid. It reported four years, $76 million. DeAndre Swift is signing a deal with the Chicago Bears. Three years, $24 million. The only mild surprise is the news that Keenan Allen, not a restructured deal, a trade to the Chicago Bears for a fourth round pick. You know, you guys, I'm just going to jump straight into the Chicago Bears at this point because uh, this team is already making a ton of moves this offseason, and it doesn't look like they're going to stop anytime soon. They've made additions to not only the offensive side of the ball in big ways to give some weapons for their new quarterback coming in to work with, and they've also added to a defense that played really, really good last year, especially after the Montez Sweat trade. And what's crazy about this is that I think they're going to add even more, and it's not even the draft yet, so I think we could see this team become a true contender in the NFC. But before we get into why I believe that, if you like Chicago Bears content just like this, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any Chicago Bears videos for the remainder of this offseason. Okay, so to get back on topic with the Chicago Bears, as we all know, they came into this season looking to see at least a little bit of improvement due to the fact they added DJ Moore the previous year, and that it was finally going to be the first season we saw Justin Fields with a weapon on his team. And even though the season didn't turn out to them making the playoffs, we still saw the improvement that we wanted to see going from 3-14 and 14 to now 7-10 and 10 and almost finding a way to squeeze their way in the playoffs. I know that didn't end up happening, so it made the season look a little bit worse than I personally thought it was, because I think if Justin Fields would have been able to stay healthy they probably would have found a way to squeeze in and that says a lot to me about how talented this roster really is now speaking of Justin Fields though the first thing we have to talk about is the quarterback position because obviously they traded Fields away which means they're going to be drafting that guy Caleb Williams in the draft and it's pretty obvious at this current point there's not really any other prospect that's at the level that he's at and he's honestly one of the best prospects that we've seen in the last 10 or even 20 years which means the Bears are probably going to get a pretty good one he can literally do whatever you ask him to, whether it's play in structure and get the ball out of his hands fast, or if the play breaks down, he has some of that Mahomes and Josh Allen type play style where he's able to get out of it and either use his legs or make a crazy play with his arm that you don't see very much. He's an extremely special talent, and I think that's why the Bears decided it was a good time to move on from Justin Fields, and I personally would have to agree with him, and I think most Bears fans would agree with that too. Justin Fields just hadn't really shown us much of anything, and I don't think it would be a good idea for the Bears to pay him a big contract because of that. So going out and taking one of the best quarterback prospects that we've seen in a very long time to where you're going to have him for four years without paying him much is a pretty good deal in my opinion. Especially when you consider you're still trying to build the roster out and it'll be a lot easier for you to put the pieces around him for this team to be good and that's what the Bears have already started to do. I mean of course they're still going to have DJ Moore who came into this offense last year and finally gave this team a true number one receiver and he played just like that all season long. He had one of the best receiver seasons out of any receiver in the the NFL, and he's only 26 years old, so I think we're going to continue to see him do that as he progresses in his career. But outside of DJ Moore, there just wasn't a ton to work with, which is what had me worried about the Bears bringing in a rookie quarterback because I didn't know if he would have the help needed to be able to thrive, but man oh man did the Bears see that and did they address it. They went out and made a trade for Keenan Allen, who yes, is old at 31, almost 32 years old, but I mean he's coming off the best season of his career and I think he's the perfect guy to pair with what DJ Moore Moore is good at. DJ Moore is a guy that you trust to win in man-to-man coverage, while Keenan Allen's more of a guy that at this point in his career is really, really good at finding open zones and settling down in them and being a quarterback-friendly option. He reminds me a little bit of the Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes connection with the way he's able to find the open zones and the way he's able to connect with the quarterback he's playing with, and I think we're going to see Caleb Williams rely on that a lot throughout his first season. So you have an extremely young, talented receiver as your number one option in DJ Moore. And then to pair with that, you arguably have the best receiver two option in the entire NFL, which is going to be really hard to guard by itself. But on top of that, you also have a guy in Tyler Scott who I liked a lot as a rookie and he can be a really solid option when he gets the chances. So I like him a lot as a third receiver. And then I also like Cole Komet and the addition they made of Gerald Everett to give two solid tight ends for the quarterback to work with and to give them a little bit extra in the run game department when it comes 
comes to blocking. So I think Caleb Williams is going to be coming into a pretty good situation with all things considered, especially when you consider that the Bears offensive line played a lot better last year than we've seen them play in a very long time. This is extremely important because a quarterback, especially a young one, needs an offensive line to be able to give them time to process what's going on at the next level. And then on top of that, you also went out and signed DeAndre Swift to add to a running back room that I already was pretty confident in. Swift is coming off an over 1,000 yard rushing season while averaging well over four yards per carry, which is obviously a really, really good season. He's a guy that you can not only rely on to make some things happen when he's running the ball, but also a guy that you can rely on to be a really good receiving option as well, which adds to how creative the offensive play caller can be. And then to add to this, you're still going to have Khalil Herbert, who is an extremely, extremely good back whenever he's healthy, and you're going to have Roshan Johnson, who I'm still high on from last year's draft. I think we're going to see these three guys rotated in and out a pretty good bit, which will allow them each to have pretty fresh legs, and I think it's going to make an overall really good rushing attack, which is just as important to a young quarterback's development as everything else on the offense. But as we all know, the offense isn't the only thing that matters when it comes to playing the game of football. You also got to have a good defense to pair with it, and I think the Bears have built exactly that on the other side. To start, the most important thing the Bears did for the entirety of the offseason was re-sign Jalen Johnson to a four-year deal because he is pretty easily, in my eyes, one of the best young corners in this league, and I think people just don't give him the recognition for it. To prove this to you, he was the number one graded corner in all of football, according to PFF, and when you look at his coverage specifically, he was also the number one graded corner there as well, which shows me that you can put him on pretty much anyone you want to, and he's going to find a way to lock him down. It's extremely hard to find a really, really good corner number one in the NFL, so the fact that the Bears have that and they just locked that down for the future is extremely important, and I'm not even going to lie, I'm also pretty high on what they have on the other side in Tyreek Stevenson. I know he was a little bit raw coming out of college, but he was extremely athletic at the same time, and I think that showed in his first season. He showed me a ton of flashes that gave me a lot of hope for what he could potentially become, so I think him paired with what Jalen Johnson is is a really, really good duo. But what's great about Ryan Poles is that he doesn't just sit around in the offseason, he makes moves, so re-signing Jalen Johnson wasn't all that he did. He also went out and signed a veteran safety and Kevin Byard, who is going to make this secondary even better. And then of course, to go along with him, you're still going to have Jaquan Brisker, who had a pretty solid season last year with all things considered. So I really do like the secondary. And then when it comes to the front seven, I really like what they have there as well. They of course extended Montez Sweat last year during the season. And I think that's going to be completely worth it because when he came over to Chicago, he completely changed the entire dynamic of what this defense looked like. They went from being a solid defense to one of the best defenses in the entire league and I think that's going to stay true, especially with what they've added. So you have him, you still have Demarcus Walker, who played pretty solid last year. You got Andrew Billings on the interior. You got Javon Dexter on the interior, who's going into his second season. And then behind them, you still have TJ Edwards, who played extremely, extremely well for you at linebacker. You have Tremaine Edmonds, who played really well for you at linebacker. And you have Jack Sanborn, who I didn't think played bad in his own right either, which makes up a pretty good front seven to go with the secondary that you built. I know some people didn't like the Bears keeping Matt Eberflus, but I think it was the right decision because he's going to be able to keep his defensive system in place. And we saw how good it turned out last season. So I think adding a little bit more talent and allowing him to keep implementing that is going to do wonders for what this team can do going forward. I really do think they have a chance to be a contender in year one as Caleb as a starter. But of course, that's just my opinion. So I'm still curious to know what you guys are thinking in the comments below. So let me know your thoughts about what the Bears have done so far this offseason down there. And with that being said, I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.